So there's been a math problem making its rounds on the internet and on social media. You know, it's got lots of people talking and arguing and solving and making assumptions. And I, I really don't get it. You know, you've seen some of these problems, I'm sure, on social media. If you're on social media at all, they're algebra problems. <laughs> And I hear people say all the time, you know, either I hate math or, you know, I kind of like math until they threw in the letters, which work great, by the way. But then take out the letters from algebra and replace it with, with a bunch of low resolution clip art. And all of a sudden, everybody and their mom and their, their grandmom and their great uncles, third cousins, mom, son-in-law, all lining up to solve the problem. I don't get it. Explain this to me. One of the reasons this problem in particular got so popular is that Conor McGregor tweeted the problem out saying whoever was first to provide a correct solution would get a signed bottle of whiskey. Well, Conor, I do not drink alcohol, so you can't tempt me into mathematical sin with your promises of signed whiskey. Let's take a close look at what the solution is supposed to be and the ridiculous number of arbitrary assumptions that need to be made to get there. Roll the intro. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Wrath of Math Complains. This is a very special episode where I get to tackle two topics that I've recently become very passionate about. That is... Letting you go, I was just letting you know I know the weather is cold, but you on your own I ain't no regular Joe, should've left me alone I'm in the zone, I'm where the predators roam We at the Senate in Rome, and I'm on the throne This ain't no regular poem, this ain't that regular tone, no Do you follow me, baby? what I have, do you like what you see, do I follow your path, I don't know if I like you, I just know that you're bad, who you driving me crazy, you could drive in that cab, bad, bad formulations of mathematical machinations, gotta assume to know what it means, a pair of red shoes and cones of black beans, a shirt, bullying socks and blue jeans, assumption that thrashes me and I beat, my mood, frankly, I'm split down the middle, grab the fiddle to the formula, I'm a little in the riddle and I tap out, it's 43. The, the answer to the question, it's 43. So let's take a look at the math and see where that answer comes from. I've replaced our low resolution clip art with my own doodles. So we had a pair of shoes, now we got boots. We had the dude in the bee looking shirt, now we got faceless stick figures. And we had cones of black beans, now we've got these two triangles kind of supposed to look like cones. You got a cone in the front, cone kind of peeking out in the back. So we got three equations here and bop, bop, bop three variables, let's solve the system of equations, then we'll plug them into the fourth equation. Forty-three will pop out. Let's see how it happens. All right, easy peasy. Let's solve the first equation. Boots plus boots plus boots equals 30. So three pairs of boots is equal to 30. So we'll write three pairs of boots, three pairs of boots, is equal to 30. Boy, that sure is easier to write than x. Then, let's divide both sides of the equation by 3. Oh man, ain't that simple. So we've got that pairs of boots is equal to 30 divided by 3. Pairs of boots is equal to 10. Now we can solve the next equation. Faceless stick figure plus faceless stick figure plus boots is equal to 20. So that's two faceless stick figures plus boots is equal to 20. So two faceless stick figures plus boots is equal to 20. But, of course, we know the boots, that's equal to 10. So, two faceless stick figures plus 10 is equal to 20. Two faceless stick figures plus 10 is equal to 20. Subtract 10 from both sides. Bam, look at that. We've got two faceless stick figures. Subtract 10 from both sides. So, two faceless stick figures is equal to 10. Divide both sides of the equation by 2, we've got that faceless stick figure is equal to 10 divided by 2, faceless stick figure is equal to 5. Now we can solve for the third and final variable. Pairs of cones plus pairs of cones plus faceless stick figure is equal to 13. So two pairs of cones, two pairs of cones plus faceless stick figure is equal to 13. But of course we know faceless stick figure is equal to 5. So two pairs of cones plus 5 is equal to 13. Two pairs of cones plus 5 is equal to 13. Subtract 5 from both sides, so 2 pairs of cones plus 5, but subtract 5 from both sides, so 2 pairs of cones is equal to 13 minus 5. Two pairs of cones is equal to 8. Divide both sides of the equation by 2, and we've got that pairs of cones is equal to 8 divided by 2 is 4. Pairs of cones is equal to 4. And we've solved for all three variables 
just like that. All right, y'all know what time it is. Let's plug and chug into the last equation and watch the glorious 43 pop out and let's get us some signed proper 12 whiskey. All right, so boots is equal to 10. So we can replace boots with 10. Faceless stick figure, oh, well, that's equal to five. So I'll replace that with five, which is being multiplied by pairs of cones. Pairs of cones is equal to four, so substitute four. We gotta do multiplication before addition. That's how the orders of operations work. So we've got, this is equal to 10 plus, do the multiplication first, 10 plus five times four. That's 10 plus 20. 10 plus 20, what's that? That's 30. Wait a minute. That isn't 43. We've been had. We've been duped. We've been bamboozled also. It turns out upon closer observation that in the last equation, this is just a single boot. And this is just a single cone. And apparently the boy is wearing two boots and holding two cones. Well then, that's it. We can't solve the problem. There's, there's too many variables. What kind of farce is this? Wait a minute. We could just assume a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can solve this problem. We just need to assume. To assume. I'll make an ass out of you and then ass out of me soon. I'll make an ass out of you and then ass out of me soon. I'll make an ass out of you and then ass out of me too soon. I'll make an ass out of you and then ass out of me. I stumbled on a problem and told him that I could solve him, but I was overconfident. I've stumbled to the bottom, yeah. I expected 43, I got 30. Otherwise, written as 10 plus 20. Come on, come on now, sing it with me. And me, you'll lose some proper 12 whiskey. Today might be my lucky day. Punch me a ticket to hell. Scratch a lot of ticket at the local 7 Eleven. When life gives me lemonade, I reinvent the lemon. So what we're supposed to somehow assume without throwing up on the spot is that the left foot shoe has half the value of the pair of shoes that we solved for and that the single larger cone has half the value of the pair of cones that we solved for and that the boy wearing a pair of the shoes and holding two cones that are very clearly different from the cones of black beans that we solved for somehow has the value of the boy plus the shoes plus the two cones that we did solve for that the boy is clearly not holding. Uh, now, perhaps some of these assumptions don't seem totally crazy to you. Maybe they even seem a little intuitive. Let's just roll with it and see 43 pop out. So let's go ahead and fix this mess. So this is a single shoe which has half the value of the pair of shoes. The pair of shoes was 10, so this should be Five. And then we got the boy wearing the shoes and holding two different cones, which is supposed to have the value of the boy plus the shoes plus the cones. So that's five plus 10 plus four. So we'll just write that in parentheses, five plus 10 plus four. This is being multiplied by a single larger cone, which has half the value of the pair of cones, which is half of four, which that's times two. So this is equal to five plus in parentheses, five plus 10 is 15 plus four is 19 and multiply that by two. What do we got? We've got five plus 19 times two is 38. Five plus 38 is 43. Send the whiskey, Connor. So all of this is clearly very unacceptable. First point of order, the boots and boys and cones of black beans in this problem don't represent actual objects. They don't represent actual boots and boys and cones of black beans. They're just symbols standing in the place for numbers that we're gonna solve for, just like X and Y in any standard abstract homework equation that you're gonna solve. And how do we know that? Well, for one, there are no units given in the problem. It's not like we're measuring the cost of boots, boys, and black beans, like there's some black market salesman selling boots, boys, and black beans. No, they're just symbols. There's no units given. 
Furthermore, even if we extend the benefit of the doubt and assume there's an implicit unit that all of these things are being measured in, even that cannot be the case. Imagine all of these symbols were actually being measured in the same unit. Then, in this last equation where we actually get the answer, this shoe would have that unit, but then these two things are getting multiplied, so they would have that unit squared. Thus, these two pieces would have different units. This would have the base unit, this would have the square unit. So they couldn't be added together to get a single quantity like 43. So since 43 is the answer, this must be a unitless problem. Imagine like one centimeter plus five centimeters squared can't add them together to get six centimeters. They're not like terms. So we know for sure these are all just abstract symbols. I know, shocking that this problem isn't revealing anything about the nature of reality. And I bring that up because now that we know that these are all just symbols, the two shoes don't actually represent the value of two shoes in some way, we have no reason to conclude that a single shoe is related to a pair of shoes. A pair of shoes, it's just a symbol. It's just a symbol. A single shoe? Well, that's a different symbol. A pair of cones of black beans, that's a symbol. Single cone, different symbol. So there's no reason to assume that this single shoe has half the value of the pair of shoes. They're not connected to reality, they're just symbols. Hi, Wrath of Math here, coming at you with a brand new algebra lesson. Suppose we have the equation u equals one. Solve for w. How do you do it? Well, because the w is just two u's, it's equal to two. See you next time. I think that the way we're actually implicitly supposed to understand the problem is that the right foot shoe and the left foot shoe are in fact different symbols. But we're supposed to assume that they're equal because they're both shoes. So since the pair of them is equal to 10, each shoe individually must be equal to five. But if each shoe individually has a value of five, then we're supposed to assume that shoe next to a shoe means add them together so it's 10? Since when? Last time I checked, a symbol written next to another symbol implicitly implies multiplication, not addition. So if we do assume that the shoes are equal, then I would argue in the first equation, this is a product of shoes plus a product of shoes plus a product of shoes is equal to 30. And thus we would have that shoe squared plus shoe squared plus shoe squared is equal to 30. In which case, three shoes squared is equal to 30. In which case, shoe is equal to the square root of 10. You can plug that sucker back into the original equation to see that it checks out. We'd have root 10 times root 10, which is 10. Same things over here, 10 and 10. So 10 plus 10 plus 10, 30. I don't know what will happen to but surely the worst thing of all is this blasted bloke with the boots and the black beans. We're just supposed to assume that because he's played dress up and accessorized himself with our other variables, that now all of a sudden it's just a sum? We're just supposed to assume that it's a sum. Furthermore, we're supposed to assume that it's a group sum, that it's a sum in parentheses, so that the boy should be added to the cones and the boots before the multiplication takes place. And the reason that we have to assume that this is a grouped sum, that these terms are being added in parentheses, is that if we don't assume that, we have to arbitrarily pick which one should be multiplied by two before it gets added to everything else. In which case, personally, I would argue that the most likely event is that the boy put on his shoes and then picked up the cones of black beans. And so the cones of black beans should be the last term in the sum if it were written without these parentheses. And so it should be four that gets multiplied by two since that's the thing that's next to the two. But then again, it's also possible that those shoes were actually representing some slip-on loafers or something. So perhaps he picked on the cones and then slipped on his shoes and then waddled away to the carnival. So maybe the shoes with the value of 10 were the last item and they should be multiplied by two. But alas, who cares? It's just one big giant mess. An asinine array of assumptions we're supposed to shamelessly trod down to a signed bottle of proper 12 whiskey. 
I burn this whiteboard right here and now if Amazon still sold this model. In conclusion, I'm glad that people can enjoy some math with these little riddles on social media if that's what they like. I just don't think they're good math problems because they force you to assume a bunch of different things to get to the right result. They're just not good, honest problems. They're created to deceive you. They're created to sneakily subvert your expectations. So you've got some people assuming some things, other people assuming different things. Some people notice this, other people don't notice this, but they notice that. And so everyone can argue in the comments and boost the post to the top of the feed and so more people share it, more people share it, more people get internet clout. Oh, hey man, could you help me solve this problem real quick? Are you serious? What are you, stupid or something? Yeah, it says x equals 10, and somehow I'm supposed to solve for y. Look, man, I think you gotta go to the doctor. Your vision's getting worse again. You must be blind. I mean, look, x is clearly just wearing y as an overcoat. So x plus y is equal to 10. Well, that still doesn't help. We still don't know how x and y relate, so we still can't solve it. Well, don't the symbols x and y look kind of the same? I mean, yeah, I guess they look kind of similar. Yeah, so x is equal to y, and so they're both equal to 5. No, look man, I'm not pulling your leg. It turns out you can just use letters. X plus Y equals six? Are you kidding me? 1999, I'll ship you a printout of the Greek alphabet. Alpha plus beta equals delta? Are you serious? I've been using St. John the Baptist and the Last Supper every time I gotta pick a variable. I gotta resurrect Da Vinci just to do my homework, dude.